Life Skills, Cooking Basics for Teens with Stacy at the Goffstown Public Library. And I'm Stacy, the Teen Services Library Assistant. So on each episode of Life Skills, Cooking Basics for Teens, I try to feature one or two recipes, sometimes some simple, sometimes a little more complex, and some techniques to help teens feel a little bit more comfortable in the kitchen. At the end of the video, I provide some resources, cookbooks or cooking magazines, or either um, website pages to help teams bring what they've learned a little bit further. So for today's episode, we're gonna make two things. The first is grilled cheese. There is nothing better than this comfort food. And dare I say that there's been many times where I found nothing in the house to eat and I go to the simple meal of a grilled cheese. For some reason, we always seem to have bread and cheese and butter. So we're gonna make a simple grilled cheese today, but uh, on the side, we're going to make a homemade potato chip. So we have our simple recipe that we're going to make and something a little bit elevated. But actually, as we go through this, you won't believe how simple it is to make homemade potato chips. So. We're gonna start with getting our potatoes ready, wash our hands, and then I'll show you the ingredients and the tools that we'll need. Meet me right back here. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to make our potato chips. We're gonna want a deep pan to put our oil in for frying. We're going to want some vegetable oil or canola oil. We're going to want one potato, a potato peeler, a knife, a bowl of water, and I have this extra bowl here that I'm going to put my potato skins in when I peel them. That's not necessary, but it's easy to peel into that and then dump it into the trash later. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to take my oil, I'm gonna put it into my um, pan and get that on the stove. We're not gonna put this oven on, um, the stove on yet to heat the oil, we're just gonna get it set there. We actually need to peel our potatoes, slice our potatoes, and then let them sit for a half an hour in cold water. So let me pour my oil in. You probably want to pour enough oil that gives you about a quarter inch to a half inch of oil in your pan. You'll also want a um, paper, you'll use some paper towels later, but also a Kitchen towel, and I'll show you what we'll need that for afterwards, but also make sure you have a kitchen towel off on the side. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our vegetable peeler, and we're going to peel our potato. Now I have um, washed my potato and then kind of dried it off with a paper towel, and that gives up, gets off anything that could be on the outside of the peel. Okay, your potato peeler may um, go across like this, or this blade may also go that way. Both of them are on vegetable peelers and work the same way. You're gonna bring the blade down and just keep going around till you get all the peel off of the potato. Now peeling the potato for potato chips is not necessary. You could leave the peel on. It's completely up to preference. And you'll see I'm probably not going to be too perfect about it, just enough to get the peel off. We're done with that, off to the side. Okay, so the time is gonna be spent on cutting our potato because we want really thin slices for our potato chips. Now, if your slices are a little bit thicker, that's okay. Um, I made this the other day and I had some slices that were pretty thick. They tasted a little bit like French fries, so that's still good too. But we're gonna to try to get as thin as we can. So we're just gonna put our potato like this I'm actually gonna cut mine in half. I'm gonna leave half of it over there. So we're gonna go down and we're just going to cut thin slices of potato. Okay, it's okay if they're a little uneven, just as slit thin as you think you can get them. Now I'm showing you this way because I, I don't want you to feel like you have any, that's about, Thin. See, I'm a little thicker on that side, but that's okay. We're gonna toss them right into our cold water as we are slicing them. Now there are tools to help you get sliced um, vegetables really, really thin, and that's a mandolin, but I didn't want to show you any of those tools because you might not have them at home. Um, and a mandolin is pretty sharp, 
and can it can be a little dangerous so I'm not sure how many parents might want their teens using that all right so I'm gonna finish cutting up this potato and then we'll talk about what we do next my potatoes are all sliced up. I have these um, pieces right here. I stopped cutting because it got a little unsafe. It was a little wobbly. So don't feel like you have to cut the whole potato. When it starts to feel unsafe for cutting, that's time to stop. You don't want to have any accidents in the kitchen. I'll just put these off to the side. Now we have our potatoes. They're sitting in our cold water. Set a timer for 30 minutes. We want them to sit for 30 minutes to get all the starch out of the potato. That's what helps make them super crispy. This is an important step. You don't want to miss it. So 30 minutes, potatoes sitting in water. Okay, so my potatoes have sat for 30 minutes. I went ahead and took all the water out. I just rested my hand on them and poured the water down the drain, leaving behind just the potatoes. So now I'm going to lay them out on our... Um, kitchen towel that is covered with a paper towel and you want to lay them individually. Okay. You'll notice some of them feel like they're, you know, they kind of look like potato chip already. They've curled up and that's from the water releasing the starch. All right. So let me go ahead and get all of these laid out so we can dry them. I'm actually gonna leave behind some of the thicker ones and take out the thinner ones. All right, and remember earlier I showed you my other paper towel? Yep, so that's just gonna go right over the tops of these ones, press down, and we can lay our others. We're just trying to get the water off so that when we put them into our hot oil, they are not going to splatter back at us and cause any type of burns or fire. All right, press down, getting all the water off of the potatoes. All right, I'm gonna let them sit here for a second while I bring the oil up to temp. Okay, so I have my oil on my stove top. You want to bring your oil up to 350 degrees. So I'm gonna set mine for medium or number five. If you have a candy thermometer, something that looks like this, you could put this and hold that while your oil is heating up. And once it got to 350 degrees, then you know your oil is ready. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of Tell by smell and by putting a piece of our potato in and see what it does. On the side, you wanna make sure that you have some other items. You wanna have a uh, cookie cooling rack and underneath it, a paper bag. If you don't have a cooling rack, then you could use the paper bag with paper towels on top of it. You just wanna make sure that when you put your hot potato chips here, that they have a spot to let go of the rest of that oil. Um, and then to take the potato chips out, you could use tongs, or you could also use um, a metal spatula with holes in it so that it drains that oil. And then we want to have some salt because we will be putting that on as soon as we take out our hot potato chips so the salt sticks to it. Okay, let's go ahead. And we're gonna test and see if our oil is up to temp and ready to drop our potato chips. Okay, so this is how I tell that our oil is ready. I have just a thin slice of our potato here that, you know, I didn't slice very well. This is a perfect one to put in to see if our oil is ready. So I'm gonna drop it in and it automatically rises up and starts to bubble around it we are ready to put in the rest of our potatoes. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of them. And we're gonna just gently pop them in. You wanna do a single layer. Give them a little room to move, but you're not necessarily gonna to have to turn them because we have oil all the way around. 
and we're gonna let these hang out in this oil for about three to five minutes until they start getting a little bit golden brown. The longer you keep them in, the browner they would get. That's good too, completely up to you. So let's go three to five minutes. They're looking good. There's nothing you really need to do. You don't need to worry about moving them around or anything. Just let them sit and sizzle away. If you notice, I don't have oil flying up everywhere. This is exactly what you want. I do have an apron on though, just in case, because oil will leave a stain on your clothing. So either wear something you don't mind or um, put on an apron. I think we have probably about one minute left and then we'll go ahead and take them out. Okay, so some of them are starting to brown. Take them out, drip them, make sure you're getting the oil right off, and then lay them individually on your cooling pan or your cooling rack. Then we'll hit them with some salt. Now you're gonna notice, especially some of the thicker ones, they appear wet when they come out and they are. They're actually not crispy yet. You're gonna have to let them dry a little bit. Let them cool off and the, the more that they cool, the crispier they get. So we're almost there. One, two more. All right, salt them up. Get our next batch in. Here we go. And lay them down. We're gonna repeat the same process all over again. We're gonna put them in, let them hang out for about three to five minutes. Now if your oil seems like it's getting a little too hot, a little too frantic, just turn it down a little bit, okay? Three to five minutes, we'll have our next batch. Okay, so this next batch is almost ready. Our edges are starting to brown. This guy can come out of the pool. I moved my other chips over to make room for the new batch that's so going to want to cool. Okay, just take them out, put them on the drying rack. I lost one, it's okay, I'll grab them later. Just make sure you get off as much oil as you can. That will just help with the drying, the cooling off. I keep saying drying because they appear wet, but really they're cooling off. Okay, salt them up. Perfect. I'm gonna get my last batch in. Okay, so my potato chips are just gonna hang out. They're gonna continue to crisp up as they cool off. So let's get on to the grilled cheese. Okay, so now for the grilled cheese. Nothing is simpler. Two slices of bread, any type of cheese you wanna use. Today I'm using sliced American. I have three slices here, but I'm probably going to just use two because um, the slices are pretty thick. But you can use as many slices as you want. One of my boys likes it super cheesy, um, so I use more slices for that. You could use um, American cheese, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese, you can blend cheeses. Honestly, the um, possibilities are endless. And then of course, butter and a frying pan. So let's move all of this over to the stove top and we'll see how to put this grilled cheese together. Okay, so I don't even have my frying pan on yet. I don't want it on right now because I'm gonna assemble my grilled cheese first and then we'll put our frying pan onto a medium setting if you have um, dials that have numbers, then that would be the number five. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take one slice of bread and I'm going to take some of my butter, okay? 
And room temperature butter works best because you wanna be able to spread it, okay? All right, and once I think I have that spread pretty well, I'm gonna put that piece of bread face down with the butter down towards the bottom, okay? Then we're gonna add one, two slices of our cheese. It's good that it brings all the way to the end. Nobody wants to bite into grilled cheese that doesn't have any cheese on it. And then on top piece of bread, we're going to also butter it. Spread that butter out. There we go. And then this one is going to just go right on top with the butter side facing up, okay? So that when we flip it, we have butter that's going to go down to the hot pan and that's gonna give us that nice brown, crispy outside to our grilled cheese. I'm forgetting to talk to you about a lot of tools today. It must be like my brain after a long holiday weekend, but you are going to need a spatula to flip your um, grilled cheese when it's ready. So make sure you have a spatula handy. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put my burner on to medium or number five, and we're just gonna let that cook. About three to five minutes, your grilled cheese is probably ready to flip. One way you can check is by moving it over and just lifting a corner. And if you see that it's brown, golden brown, then it's ready. If not, give it a few more minutes. There we go. And then we're gonna do the same for this side. This side might take less time because our pan is pretty warm right now. So watch it, maybe after two minutes, flip the corner and just you know peek at the corner and see if it is also golden brown. Now the reason I didn't heat my pan up beforehand and then put my grilled cheese on is because that butter and that um, first piece of bread would brown up faster and not give enough time for our cheese to also melt because that's really what we want. So I usually turn it down at this point because I do want to make sure my cheese is going to melt. So here we go. Let's take a flip, see what our other side looks like. Both sides are crispy. It smells so good. Our grilled cheese is ready. So put it on a plate, cut it in half or diagonal or into four squares, however you enjoy it. Okay, so your completed lunch or dinner is ready. Your chips and your grilled cheese. Time to eat. Don't forget to head over to Goffstown Public Library's website page. Click on the teen heading and under the life skills heading on that page, you'll find the wiki how to cook, which will give you great step-by-step -step on cooking a variety of things and using essential cooking technique. Or click on Teens Health Food and Fitness under our Life Skills heading. That will open a new web page where you can type in recipes for teens. Many recipes will come up, including this grilled cheese and pear sandwich. So that's our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed cooking along with me. If you make this recipe, I would love to see your finished potato chips or grilled cheese sandwich. Post a picture on our Facebook page, our teen Facebook page, or our Instagram. If you've made any of our recipes, can you comment below and let us know? You can comment here, but also on our Facebook page, teen Facebook page, and Instagram. To make sure you don't miss out on the next great video from the Goffstown Public Library, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time. Happy cooking.